Welcome to our channel. Today we're diving into the fascinating history of the Sokoto Caliphate, a vast empire that once stretched across West Africa. At the heart of this story lies a figure of great charisma and ambition, Usman Danfodio, a scholar and a warrior who ignited a firestorm of change. Join us as we journey back to the late 18th century, to the sun-baked savannas and bustling cities of what is now northern Nigeria, and uncover the captivating story of the Sokoto Caliphate. Make sure to stick around till the end, and don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more captivating historical tales. The year is 1754. In a small Fulani village in what is today Nigeria, a young Usman Dan Fodio is born. His family, devout Muslims and respected scholars, instill in him a profound love for knowledge and a deep sense of justice. The young Usman, a voracious reader, delves into the intricacies of Islamic law, philosophy and history. He excels in his studies, absorbing the wisdom of the ages, but the world beyond the pages of his books calls to him. Usman witnesses firsthand the injustices faced by his people, the Fulani, pastoralists navigating a complex web of power dynamics with the ruling Hausa elite. The Hausa kingdoms, though nominally Islamic, are seen by Usman and his followers as corrupt and straying from the true path of Islam. His heart burns with a desire for reform, for a society governed by the principles of piety and justice he holds so dear. As Usman matures, his reputation as a scholar and a preacher spreads far and wide. He attracts a devoted following drawn to his eloquence, his piety, and his vision of a more just and equitable society. His sermons, passionate and insightful, resonate deeply with the common people who see in him a beacon of hope. The Hausa rulers, threatened by his rising popularity and his calls for reform, view him with increasing suspicion. In 1804, Usman Dan Fodio, compelled by a sense of duty and driven by the aspirations of his followers, declares a jihad, a holy war, against the corrupt Hausa elite. This declaration marks a turning point in his life, transforming him from a respected scholar into a revolutionary leader. Usman's call to arms resonates deeply with the Fulani and other marginalized groups who have long endured oppression under Hausa rule. They flock to his banner, their hearts aflame with religious zeal and a thirst for justice. Farmers, blacksmiths, traders and herdsmen, united by their shared faith and their yearning for a more equitable society, take up arms alongside Usman's growing army. Usman proves to be not just a spiritual guide but also a shrewd tactician. He understands the power of alliances, forging bonds with disaffected Hausa nobles and neighboring communities. His army, a diverse force bound by their common cause, swells in number, their determination fueled by early victories. The war is not without its challenges. The Hosa kingdoms, though weakened by internal strife, still possess formidable armies and resources. Battles are fought with ferocity on both sides, the dry earth stained with the blood of countless soldiers, yet Usman's forces, inspired by their leader's unwavering belief and strategic acumen, prevail time and again. The capture of Gobir, a powerful Hausa city, in 1808 marks a turning point in the war. This decisive victory sends shockwaves through the region, solidifying Usman's reputation and inspiring greater support. The fall of Gobir signals the beginning of the end for the Hausa kingdoms their grip on power steadily weakening. As his forces liberate town after town, Usman implements reforms aimed at creating a more pious and prosperous society. He establishes Islamic courts, promotes literacy and education, and encourages trade and economic development. Under Usman's guidance, Sokoto transforms into a center of learning and commerce, a beacon of hope in a region long plagued by instability and injustice. Chapter three a legacy forged, consolidation and expansion. With the fall of the Hausa kingdoms, Usman Danfodio found himself at the helm of a vast and expanding empire. New leaders, inspired by Usman's message and empowered by the fervor of the revolution, emerged across the region, eager to establish their own emirates within the framework of the Sokoto Caliphate. Usman recognized the immense challenges of consolidating his newfound power and governing a diverse and expansive territory. He understood that true victory lay not just in military conquest, but in building a lasting system of governance rooted in justice, piety and prosperity. Usman turned his attention to administration, 
crafting a system that would ensure the stability and longevity of the Sokoto Caliphate. He divided the empire into emirates, each ruled by a trusted lieutenant or a member of his own family, individuals deeply devoted to the principles of the jihad. These emirs, though granted considerable autonomy, were bound to uphold Islamic law, maintain justice, collect taxes and provide troops to the caliph in times of need. This decentralized system of governance proved remarkably effective in maintaining order and fostering a sense of unity across the vast expanse of the caliphate. Usman remained deeply committed to the principles of piety and simplicity that had fueled the revolution. He eschewed the opulent lifestyles of the deposed Hausa rulers, choosing instead to lead by example, living modestly and dedicating his time to scholarship, teaching and prayer. Usman's scholarship, infused with his unwavering belief in justice and social reform, continued to inspire generations of scholars and leaders across West Africa. The Sokoto Caliphate, under Usman's guidance, flourished. Trade routes crisscrossed the empire, carrying goods and ideas between bustling cities and distant lands. Usman Dan Fodio, the scholar who had dared to challenge the status quo, had succeeded in creating a powerful and prosperous empire. Chapter 4. Trials of Leadership, Internal Strife and External Threats The Sokoto Caliphate, though a beacon of unity and prosperity, was not immune to the winds of change and the ever-present threat of discord. As the first generation of revolutionaries aged and the fervor of the initial jihad waned, new challenges arose, testing the very foundations of Usman's creation. Internal rivalries, often simmering beneath the surface of unity, began to emerge. Ambitious emirs, eager to expand their power and influence, clashed over resources, territory and succession. Usman, now in his twilight years, watched with growing concern as the seeds of discord threatened to unravel the fabric of the empire he had so painstakingly woven. External threats also loomed large. Neighbouring kingdoms, envious of the caliphate's wealth and power, saw an opportunity to exploit any internal weakness. Raiders and slave traders, emboldened by the shifting power dynamics, launched daring attacks on outlying villages and trade caravans, disrupting the delicate peace and testing the caliphate's defences. Usman tirelessly worked to mediate disputes, reminding his people of their shared faith and the principles of unity that had brought them so far. He called upon his sons, Mohammed Bello and Abdullahi Dan Fodio, both renowned scholars and skilled administrators, to assist him in governing the vast empire. Despite his best efforts, Usman was unable to completely quell the growing unrest. Chapter 5. A Lasting Legacy. Usman's Final Days and the Future of the Caliphate. As the sun began to set on Usman Danfodio's long and impactful life, the Sokoto Caliphate stood at a crossroads. The empire he had forged, though facing challenges from within and without, remained a testament to his vision a beacon of hope and prosperity in a turbulent region. Usman, now elderly and increasingly withdrawn from the daily affairs of state, spent his final days in quiet contemplation, surrounded by his family and closest advisers. He continued to receive visitors offering counsel and guidance to those who sought his wisdom, his mind remaining sharp even as his body weakened. He witnessed with a mixture of pride and concern the efforts of his sons, Mohammed Bello and Abdullahi, to preserve his legacy and guide the caliphate through the challenges that lay ahead. In 1817, after a long and fulfilling life dedicated to knowledge, faith and the betterment of his people, Usman Dan Fodio passed away. His death plunged the caliphate into mourning as people from all walks of life, from humble farmers to powerful emirs, mourned the loss of their spiritual guide, their revolutionary leader and their scholar king. Usman's legacy extended far beyond his mortal lifespan. He left behind a transformed society, a vast and powerful empire that had reshaped the political and social landscape of West Africa. The Sokoto Caliphate, though facing ongoing challenges, continued to prosper in the decades following Usman's death. Usman Dan Fodio's story is a testament to the power of ideas, the transformative impact of faith, and the enduring legacy of a life dedicated to justice and the betterment of humanity. Outro, a legacy remembered. Usman Danfodio's story, though rooted in a specific time and place, carries timeless lessons about leadership, faith, and the pursuit of justice. 
The Sokoto Caliphate, a testament to his vision and the unwavering dedication of his followers, left an enduring mark on West Africa, shaping its history, culture and religious landscape for generations to come. As we reflect on the rise and legacy of the Sokoto Caliphate, we're reminded of the power of ideas to inspire change, the importance of unity in overcoming adversity, and the enduring impact of individuals who dare to challenge the status quo and strive to create a more just and equitable world. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this journey through history, please like, share and subscribe to our channel for more amazing stories. See you next time.